Good morning and uh, welcome to the fourth day of the Brazil PDAC 2021 series of events. This morning we're hosting our third Brazilian mining session, Mineral Exploration Search Spaces in Brazil. I'm Carolina Alberna, CEO of the Brazil Canada Chamber of Commerce, and I will be your MC today. I would like to thank all our sponsoring companies uh, for the trust and support. Uh, our platinum sponsors Vale and our gold sponsors ILS, APN Capital Brazil, Export Development Canada, Aero Copper, Mineração Caraíba, Nexa Resources, Serabi Gold, and Wheaton Precious Metals, as well as our silver sponsors, Forbi Mining, Amarillo Gold Corporation, Baker McKenzie, Bellosan Mining, BMA Law, Brookfield Asset Management, Sascon Barrier, CBPM, Equinox Gold, G21 Consultoria, Geosol, Great Panther Mining, uh, Horizonte Minerals, Jaguar Mining, Kinross Brasil Mineração, Landing Mining, Promo Engenharia, Sigma Lithium Resources, Toronto Stock Exchange and Toronto Stock Exchange Ventures, and Valor Metals. And last but at least all our partners and the organizing committee uh, for the PDAC 2021 series of events. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our chairman here today, Roberto Xavier, Executive Director at Ajimbi, Agency for the Development and Innovation of the Mining Sector. and. Uh, one of the reasons why we're here today, our big partner to put this event together. So Roberto, thank you and it's your stage. Thank you very much, uh, Carolina. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to the panel Mineral Exploration Search Space in Brazil. Uh, this panel belongs to the agenda of the Brazilian mining sessions at PDAC 2021, organized by ADIN, Agency for the Development and Innovation of the Brazilian Mining Sector in partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, IBRAN, which is the Brazilian Mining Institute, and AVPM, the Brazilian Association of Mineral Exploration Companies. I'm uh, Roberto Xavier, Executive Director at ADINDI, and I'll be the moderator of this panel. In previous uh, versions of the PDAC, we were strongly engaged in showing Brazil's great mineral endowment distributed in its several mineral provinces and districts located in Archean and Proterozoic, Cretonic domains, and orogenic realms. In this Brazil PDAC 2021, we want to focus on potential new search spaces for mineral exploration a critical exercise for those companies that intend to expand their activities in the country or stockholders that want to start exploration activities in Brazil and are looking for opportunities. In order to contribute to the topic on mineral exploration search space in Brazil, this panel has three presentations. One provides a general view on the mineral potential new perspectives for exploration in Brazil, which is going to be delivered by Dr. Anderson Dorado Rodrigues da Silva of the Geology Survey of Brazil. The other two presentations will be focused respectively on gold exploration in Brazil, new frontiers and challenges, uh, which is going to be presented by Professor Lidia Lodato of the Federal University of Minas Gerais, and on mafic, ultramafic related nickel, copper, cobalt, platinum group elements, Canadian and titanium deposits in Brazil, uh, which is going to be delivered by Professor Cesar Ferreira Filho of the University of Brazil. So, with no further ado, at least for the moment, let's put the show on the road and invite to this stage. Dr. Anderson Rodriguez da Silva for our first presentation. Anderson, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Anderson Dorado. I am an economic geologist working in the Economic Geology Division at the Geological Survey of Brazil. Today, I will present you an overview of the Brazilian mineral potential and some initiatives of the Geological Survey of Brazil focused on increasing knowledge about non and other explored areas in this talk called Mineral Potential and New Perspectives for Exploration in Brazil. The outlines of this, presentations, this presentation are to give you some information about 
the Geological Survey of Brazil, the Brazilian mining production, the diversity of geological setting and mineral systems, the mineral province and districts, the major production areas in Brazil, emerging areas, underexplored regions, and the recent 10 years last discoveries, CPRM's major assessment projects, the PPI program and public offering of areas, and some closing remarks. The Geological Survey of Brazil is linked to the Secretary of Geology, Mining and Mineral Transformation of the Ministry of Mines and Energy. As a technical body, the CPRM performs the functions of generating and promoting geoscientific knowledge in the national territory, while the National Mining Agents ANM is the sector regulatory agency is the sector's regulatory agency. We are about 576 researchers that include 130 with PhD and 364 with master degrees working in four areas of expertise, geology, mineral resources, geological hazards, surface and groundwater. This specialized team work in offices in most of the Brazilian states and operates all over the country. We have Latin America's large database of pre-competitive data that are all free and available for download in our platforms. You can find geological maps and reports on this platform, the geophysics data and images, and geochemical data. Currently, CPRM has done major projects in all Brazilian mineral provinces and until 2030, we'll finish survey in most of these areas with particular attention to the potential to particular attention to the Amazon area. You can download these maps and look for the information about geological maps and all this in the QR codes here. On these two websites, you also can search for all the information generated by the CPRM over the years geological maps and all kinds of data. In this one, the Geo, Geo SGB, and in the Regel, you can find our reports and our scientific production. The Brazilian mining production. Our mineral industry produces more than 50 different raw materials, and we are global players of iron, manganese, niobium, tantalite, bauxite, graphite, and dimension stones. We are also major exporters of nickel, tin, gold, magnesite, and kaolin. The mineral sector has a crucial importance in the Brazilian economy, with a revenue of the industry being about 200 billion reais in 2020, and the production reached over a billion tons of, of ore. Investments are predicted in 38 US billion dollars between 2020 and 2024. The sector is responsible for 17% of the Brazilian exports and contributes to the national trade balancing with 32 US billion dollars. Brazil is a reliable and stable supplier for several critical minerals, highlighting niobium, for which we hold more than 90% of the reserves and production in the world and deposits of manganese, graphite, and tantal. We also have small productions of wolframium, vanadium, and titanium. We expect in the next years to produce hard earth elements, lithium, and cobalt in projects that are already in advanced exploration phases. There is an under underexplored potential for metals like germanium that are usually found together with minerals that we already exploited in Brazil, and they can be exploited as co-products, and we have the right technology to do so. We also consider critical for the country substances such phosphate and potash that is related to the production of fertilizers, as Brazil is a major food export, and we are extremely dependent on the import of these products. Uranium is also an strategic, strategic for the country and is currently a state monopoly. Actually, Brazil has the only active uranium mine in South America. 
Brazil has a territory of continental proportions, one of the world's largest countries, with a very diverse geological setting and mineral system. Almost 50% of the country includes Phanerozoic sedimentary bases, with deposits of phosphorus, potash, coal, and uranium. Precambrian shields cover the other half, including greenstone belts, magmatic arcs, orogenic belts, continental rifts, celestic large igneous provinces, mafic and ultramafic magmatism, archaean and proterozoic sedimentary basins, and intraplate granites in these areas. These environments hold many types of mineral systems, responsible for the mineralization of base metals, precious metals, special metals, and critical minerals. All this diversity of geological settings and mineral systems is, re is reflected in many mineral provinces and mineral districts. Brazil has about 20 mining active districts and several areas where exploration is emerging, especially in the Amazon region where, in recent years, many deposits were found. The major production areas in Brazil The Carajás Mineral Province is one of the most important mineral production areas in Brazil and in the world. This province has a large and diverse number of mineral deposits related to the several mineral systems that act at different times in Earth's history. These mineral systems include supergenic, paleoproterozoic IOCG and granite related with copper, gold, tin, bismuth and others. Paleoproterozoic orogenic gold deposits, the possibility of this kind of deposits. Paleoproterozoic sedimentary with manganese, Archean IOCG, Archean sedimentary exhalative deposits, Archean mafic and neutromafic, and Archean orogenic deposits. Despite the importance of the province, there are still available and promising areas for mineral exploration. These areas will be disclosed by AMM in public offering rounds during this year. Along with Carajás, the Aran Quadrangle is another of the most important Brazilian mineral provinces. The importance of the gold production associated with greenstone belt sequences goes back to colonial times. Currently, the region remains a significant producer of gold and iron ore associated with a diversity of mineral systems that includes Neoproterozoic orogenic gold and AGP deposits, Paleoproterozoic orogenic gold deposits, Paleoproterozoic chemical exhalative iron and manganese deposits, Paleoproterozoic paleoplacers with potential for gold and uranium, and Archean orogenic gold deposits. CPRM is carrying out several geological mapping and mineral resource assessment projects in the region in order to support the mineral and exploration industry in this area. There are still available opportunities in these hot exploration areas, with many available areas that ANM will disclose in the, in the recent year. One of the Brazilian Geological Survey initiatives in the Iron Quadrangle is the recently published favorability map for gold in the Kiaf area. This product used the integration of, of evidence maps that are related to the source of fluids, structures for the migration of them, geological traps, and mechanisms of deposition in a knowledge-driven approach for orogenic gold deposits associated with the Houston, oh, sorry, with the Hildas Velhas greenstone belt. The high potential for gold goes beyond the known deposits with the identification of areas with high favorability, like this one in the west part of the map. You can download this map using this QR code here. The north part of the Brazilian belt has a diversity of geological settings that includes neoproterozoic magmatic arcs with copper and gold porphyrite deposits, meso to neoproterozoic sedimentary basins, with base metal deposits and orogenic gold deposits, and Archean greenstone belts with important gold deposits. There are still available opportunities in this portion of the Brazilian belt, with many available areas that ANEM 
A&M will disclose this year in the public offering rounds. So now we are going to talk about emerging areas in Brazil. The southern part of the Amazon Craton is one of the most promising exploration areas in Brazil, especially in the Tapajós Mineral Province and the Alta Floresta Mineral Province. In, this, in these two areas occurs gold mineralizations associated with vulcano-plutonic units with paleo to mesoproterozoic ages in a magmatic, magmatic hydrothermal systems. Historical gold production estimated for these two areas are in 780 tons of gold. Uh, there is also potential for gold in these two districts, Juma and Nova Brasilândia, an important lead and zinc Broken Hill type deposit in Nova Brasilândia district. There are still available areas for exploration in this region that will be disclosed by AM in upcoming offering rounds. In recent years, the Geological Survey completed new geological maps of the Tapajós Mineral Province and started initiatives regarding the mineral potential and the evolution of the deposits in the province. In the upcoming public offering by the National Mining Agents, there are important areas that are still available. These two polygons represent areas where CPRM are producing new favorability maps. These are two examples of favorability maps in the Tocantinsinho trend, in, in the eastern part of the trend and in the western part of the trend. In this area, there are examples of gold in magmatic hydrothermal deposits like Tocantinsinho deposit. The map shows that there are areas with high favorability in addition with those with non-mineral deposits. This is a very good product for mineral exploration because you can use this, this as a vectoring for searching for new mineralizations. Due to the mineral potential of Alta Floresta Mineral Province, CPRM has carried out several geological surveys that resulted in the publication of several new maps and reports. In addition to those initiatives, the geological survey made anomaly chart in a total of 82 geological map sheets of the province available for download. You can search for them using this QR code here. I will show you in detail, an anomaly chart of this geological sheet. This is an example of one of the 82 anomaly charts that integrates CPRM's available information concerning geology, airborne geophysics, geochemistry, and no mineral resources. The purpose of these products is to support vectoring for mineral exploration. We use machine learning techniques to automate steps in the production of the information contained in these maps. The maps of the, the maps of the anomaly chart precedes the favorability maps that I show you in last slides. You can search for this map using this QR code here. Next, we are going to talk about underexplored areas in Brazil. The block of our Kian age is one of the oldest crystal segments exposed in the Brazilian territory. The block contains several metavulcano sedimentary sequences, often interpreted as greenstone belts, with high potential for gold and base metals. There is an important Archean Paleoplacer gold deposit hosted by Jacobina Group, similar to the South African Vitpates Rand, and the mentioned only South America uranium active deposit in the Valle do Paramirim region. In the east part of the block, the block is in contact with the Itabuna Salvador Curaçao Belt, which hosts important copper deposits hosted by mafic and ultramafic rocks. There are also iron and manganese deposits and potential for IOCG. Uh, this map shows the available areas, so there is still available areas and good opportunities to invest in this block. The Borborema province is a neoproterozoic belt located in the northeast portion of the country. This province hosts important deposits and mineral systems, as the examples of copper potential in the northwest Ceará, 
orogenic gold deposits in Triopeda Branca region, and several Wolframium deposits and potential for polymetallic mineralizations associated with intrusion related and scar systems in the Seridot district, as well as lithium in pegmatites. There are a large number of available areas for exploration in this region. In this, in this example of the geological and mineral research map of the city dot district, you can see represented by the small green dots all over the map several deposits and the small prospects of Wolframium. Looking closer, you will see clusters of Wolframium associated with the intrusion of Neoproterozoic granitoids. These intrusion-related and scar mineral systems are responsible for forming these deposits and hold potential for polymetallic mineralizations. The Guiana Shield and the Amazon Basin in the north part of the Amazon Craton represent a new exploratory frontier. Recently, the region has been a target of work carried out by the Geological Survey of Brazil to improve geological and metallogenic knowledge. The most important deposits the most important non-deposits in the area are base metal deposits of the Serra do Navio region, here, potash deposits all over the Amazon basin, potential for polymetallic deposits with niobium, titanium, and hard earth elements in carbonatite intrusion, here, and gold associated with greenstone belts. Stru greenstone belt and the gold are structural controlled. Uh, this is the map showing the areas that will be available for public offering by the National Mining Agency. As I mentioned before, Brazil is very dependent on potash imports, and we consider this substance strategic for our economy. In this context, the Geological Survey of Brazil is performing important projects to access the potential for potash in the Amazon Basin region. This is a recently published report focused on the evaluation of potash potential in the Middle West region of the Amazon Basin. This image shows a, rep a representative surface in the time domain of the top of the evaporite sequence, subsequence with potash potential. This is just an example of the kind of work that we, do, we did in this report. You can download this report using this QR code here. Now I'm going to show you some recent discoveries in the country. The country holds an exciting environment for mineral exploration that includes recent discoveries in the last 10 years, including the zinc and lead deposits of Nova Brasilândia in the southern part of the Amazon Craton, the porphyry copper in the, Af in the Alta Floresta mineral province, the vanadium deposit in Maracá, state of Bahia, and some copper gold and hard earth elements in the Carajás mineral province. So I'm going to show you the CPRM's major assessment projects. The Geological Survey of Brazil has an extensive program regarding mineral resources. We are working on several assessment projects with critical minerals, strategic minerals, and some selected precious and base metals. metals. These assessment these assessment projects are related to, but not limited to, revision of deposits and metallogenetic models, exploration geochemistry and geophysics, in some cases, multi-scale potential modeling, as we are executing with copper, gold, uranium, lithium, and graphite, and also some experimental efforts with undiscovered resources estimations for gold and copper, and one initiative in partnership with the Geological Survey of Germany in unconventional source evaluation for cobalt. The Brazilian federal government created the PPI, the Investment Partnership Program, to expand and extend the integration between the state and the private sector by signing partnership contracts and other privatization measures. Do its mineral exploration activity during the 70s and 80s, CPRM has 30 mining projects. Of this total, 10 will be actioned to the private sector throughout the year of 2021. 
the thin areas are represented in this map and I will show you some more detailed information about the Bon Jardin and the Miriri project in the next two slides. The Bon Jardin copper project is located in the southwest part of the Goiás state in the central part of the country. It corresponds to one mining claim in a thousand hectare area. The region has excellent infrastructure and no environmental issues. A pre-visibility study indicates resources of 4.5 million tons with 0.43 of copper content. In the exploratory program, the geological survey executed a geochem geochemistry, terrestrial geophysics and 8,000 meters of drilling. The deposit is located in the southern part of the Goiás Magmatic Arc, being hosted by these metavolcanic rocks. Uh, the deposit is considered to be a VHMS type. The auction of the, the project will be on June of 2021. The Miriri Phosphate project is located in the states of Pernambuco and Paraíba corresponds to seven mining claims in an area with approximately 6,000 hectares. The Geological Survey of Brazil made a total of 176 drill holes with about 7,000 meters. Resources are estimated at 115 million tons with 4.19 content. The project development considers two different scenarios, mining process for, from, for direct application on agriculture and implementation of concentrated phosphate process. The, op, the action, auction sorry, will be on June 2021. You can search for the information about this auction in this QR code here. A public offering of areas by the National Mining Agents in the next two years. The National Mining Agency, ANM, will realize a public offering of available areas in eight, seven offering rounds. The goal of this public offering are select stakeholders interested in developing exploration and mining projects that already have been authorized and returned to the agents. According to the Brazilian regulations, the offer shall be followed by auction for those areas with more than one application. In the next two years, around 35,000 areas will be disclosed in eight offering rounds. This image shows the distribution of the available areas that will be offering for the public. This week, the National Mining Agency (ANM) will start the second round of sorry, <coughs> will start the second round of public offering of available areas. ANM will offer almost 7,000 areas, most of the areas with mineral exploration permits and 272 with mining permits. The areas are located in 25 states of Brazil. Uh, you can find all the information about the second round in the QR code here. A mineral exploration and production planning platform that are under development. This platform is an effort of the Brazilian Geological Survey with the Secretary of Geology, Mining and Mineral Transformation of the Ministry of Mines and Energy to gather relevant information to the sector. The platform will integrate information about economic geology, mineral economics, infrastructure, world and national markets, and territorial, socioeconomic, and social environmental aspects of the area. You can watch a video about this platform in our virtual booth. Some closing remarks. Some highlights of this presentation. Brazil has several underexplored and emerging areas to be developed. We have a high potential for new discoveries in the main provinces and districts, as we can show by the important discoveries in the recent years. We also have exploration opportunities on critical and strategical metals, a specialized workforce available locally, a large and pre-competitive database available that is public and free of charge, and 
a committed public sector with the development of the mining industry. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions or doubts, please contact me on this email. I will be glad to respond to all of you. Thank you very much, Anderson, for the presentation. And please stand by for the Q&A action uh, or session. Uh, before I move on, I'd like to ask Carolina if she can see me well uh, on my monitor. Yes. Yes, Roberto. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, gold is unique because it's the only economically important metal or a major byproduct from at least 11 different deposit types. Gold for ounces have remained attractive in the market and have moved investments on the order on the order of five billion dollars annually. Investments in the exploration of metal commodities in Latin America, uh, Latin America, what we call LATAM, uh, uh, have been significant when compared to other regions in the world. Uh, gold is on the top of the list. The top ten mines in LATAM produce around 4.5 million ounces of gold. In fact, 8% less than the previous year, but uh, have recorded positive cash flows. In Brazil, gold accounts for 8.9% of the production of metals, and mineral lights are on the order of 4,500. So uh, exploration for gold in Brazil has been very active lately. So to talk about gold in Brazil, I call to this stage Professor Lydia Lobato. Please, Lydia, the show is all yours now. Uh, hello, Roberto. Thank you so much for introducing me. Today, we're going to talk about new frontiers and challenges uh, for gold exploration in Brazil. Um, the first slide uh, shows the 16 leading gold production countries in the world, with Brazil occupying the position number 13, which has so for many years, in fact. And as you can see that the NPM, which is a Brazilian government agency, shows that in the year 2019, Brazil produced close to 89 tons of gold, out of which 80.7 was from primary source, in 19.2 from Garimpeiros. Um, these are two charts showing the evolution of gold price throughout the years, uh, from 1978 here, okay, until 2020, and showing how the pandemic, the global pandemic, has affected the gold price, uh, and, affect, and it affected it tremendously. And it actually, it started in 2019, okay, all the way to 2020. And now in 2021, it's fluctuating a little bit, but it's still very high. The price is still really high. The chart in the bottom part is actually a blow up of the one uh, uh, in the top. Now, it's very interesting that we can see that the variation in gold price, you know, this, this rise in gold price from 2019 onwards has a lot to do with the variation and the high price of the US dollar against other currencies, including the Brazil real, as we can see here. The Brazil real has lost value tremendously in the past few years, but especially since 2019, as we see here. And these other charts show how the Brazil real has lost values, you know, value in the past many, many days, you know, until today, like just last week. Uh, I call your attention that these data uh, uh, were uh, retrieved from these sites on the 24th of February, both the, this page and the page uh, uh, before. Okay, we now move to have a look at just, you know, with this incredible gold price, how gold outperformed the major assets that are used by investors in the world. It's, it's amazing, you know, the, the value, how it just 
you know, performed so well in comparison to some of the other uh, commodities and uh, U.S. treasures and others. It's 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 quite it's quite something. Okay, we now move to this one and we see that SPG Global Analysis for Major Gold Discoveries uh, uh, that they did, you know, in another annual report showed that 278 deposits discovered between the years of 1990 and 2019, which is shown here in this chart, okay, uh, showed that almost 2.2 million ounces of gold uh, with the sum of reserves, resources, and past production, okay, uh, were you know discovered uh, along these these uh, uh, these years. However, no major discoveries discoveries uh, were uh, were made in the past three years, and only twenty five in the past decade. Now, what is the reason for that? It's understood that the lack of discoveries is driven by exploration focusing on older discoveries in larger, uh, later stage uh, assets. Um, so what does that mean? You know, a lot of that has to do with the shift from greenfields exploration uh, uh, to, to more of a brownfield exploration that we have seen in, in the many, many uh, years uh, uh, in the past decades. Of course, there are still plenty of gold assets out there to be developed, but the lack of major discovered deposits represents that the projects, you know, the, the pipeline of gold that is necessary to replace aging major gold, gold mines is not coming out there. So these major gold, gold mines, uh, you know, don't have the replenished gold that they need. Although this is a world scenario, this is a very similar scenario that we see in Brazil. Now, the chart here shows the projected new uh, uh, gold discoveries in dark blue, gold in reserves, resources in past production in light blue, and the gold exploration budget, you know, this line in yellow. We see that same figure in the next slide. Now, with the top figure, which is the US per ounce. Uh, uh, expenditure here, showing that there's a very rough coincidence between the uh, expenditure, budget expenditure, and the price of gold, showing that when we spend more, also the gold uh, price goes up. This is not necessarily only the reason, okay, for the price of gold going up. We know that, you know, like COVID, et cetera, uh, there are many other factors that influence that, but that's a very interesting coincidence to, coincidence to keep in mind. The next slide shows that the production of gold, you know, was, had a sort of a, an increase, a steady increase until 2015. Uh, and, and then from 2015 onwards towards 2020, it, it sort of flattened out a little bit. And then from uh, onwards, 2019 on, onwards, it started to go down. And it's actually predicted that 2021, it will be a year that uh, gold production, production will decrease in fact. So we had in 2020, this very positive sentiment for precious metals, and then the price of gold went up, you know, the devaluation of currencies in general, when, you know, was, 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 you know, was large, okay. Gold will in fact continue to be uh, sought after as, as a protection against uh, the financial crisis in general and the devaluation of currencies in the world. However, how is gold likely to hang on to its 2020 gains as far as you know, the COVID situation is? Because vaccines are coming faster, but at the same time, you know, not steadily. Infection rates and hospitalizations are still out there. So it, there is a sort of an unpredictable scenario for, for the gold price in the next two to three years. We don't know. So there's kind of a rush Okay, and, and people don't know exactly how much time they have to invest and to make, a, 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 let's say, to make use of this very high, high price. This diagram here shows the distribution of the discoveries in the past 10 years. And what we see is that it was Africa and Latin America who showed uh, the most of the discoveries, two thirds of the discoveries. So that is quite, 
kind of interesting too, and not you know the sort of more traditional producing countries. Uh, this is a slide of the, the, the world showing the 10 top gold mines in the world. And as you can see, I put these little boxes with the name, the classification for each and every one of these uh, mines. And you can see that the name orogenic stands out being the most important of all of them. So we have the 10 of, of them distributed around the world. There's none of them for, for, for South America and we don't, we now move on to the next page. And what is this next page? This next page has the gold deposits by types and endowments. Now, highlighted already, we see that orogenic, you know, that orogenic, that name comes out as almost 30%. So 30% of endowments in terms of gold deposits in the world comes from the so-called orogenic, okay? Then we have the a porphyry type and epithermal, you know, sorry, uh, ep uh, orogenic epithermal and porphyry type here, okay? And we, we then have another family called Paleoplasa, which does not show in that world uh, map, okay? So, you know, we, we see that exactly, there's a coincidence, of course, in terms of the type of classification in that map and the type of most important in terms of endowments. I call your attention for this type here called IOCG. This is one family which here shows as just what 2%, so a small percentage in terms of worldwide uh, uh, percentage, but it's going to be very important for us in terms of Brazil. We now move to Brazil. So what is the Brazilian scenario? This is a map of Brazil showing the most important districts and deposits of Brazil that have a, a equal amount of 0.1 million ounces or more than that of gold in deposits and districts very well. With the data produced here, we took these data and we constructed this diagram. Now, this diagram is showing to us that the largest number of deposits and districts of Brazil are of the orogenic type. Orogenic gold. Some of these deposits have closed already, were mines that produced a lot of gold, but are no longer in production. But there's a very interesting thing to notice in this, in this diagram, is the fact that the largest resource in gold in Brazil today, Salobo, Sossego, Cristalino, Igarapé Bahia, etc., is held by IOCGs. Remember I said, Pay attention to this name, IOCG. Well, these are the guys that hold the most amount of gold in this country today. So this is very interesting and it's something that we should pay attention from now on in terms of future of gold in this country. So what is happening in Brazil? It's experiencing this new incredible super gold cycle because of these gold prices and devalued real. Now, do we have a lot of 10 million ounces projects? Hmm, I don't know. Deposits known in the past 10 to 15 years to have between 800,000 ounces up to 3 million ounces, they must be reevaluated. Some may represent investment opportunities, say of, you know, $52 million. Some paralyzed mines may be viable again and may, may turn into open pit operations or may even turn to underground operations. However, some smaller targets are, however, <laughs> and unfortunately in the hands of, or surrounded by that impairs. Projects like the Great Panther Tucano mine in operation and the PA Gold Filon Paraiba, which is you know, yet to be developed, are examples due for underground next year. But the key thing in Brazil, and it is for other countries as well, is time. Because as we do not know how long this incredible, fantastic gold price is going to last, we have to think of time. And because in Brazil, getting a mine to produce, mainly because of environmental license, and how long it takes for us to license an area to be mined, takes so long, about three years, we are, really have we really have to worry how much time we have mining companies does then need target 
or areas to become viable in the fastest time possible. You know, areas or let's say satellite or bodies that may represent investment return in three years or even less. So they can, you know, uh, make use of this excellent price. So the next decade in Brazil is decisive with Brazil's largest deposits hitting their limit and no big gold projects to be launched. We're not discovering anything. We don't have anything in the near future to be launched. So deep mines, as far as we know, and the deepest one and the best one we have is in Minas Gerais called Cuiabá is hitting bottom. <laughs> well, it's gonna last many years, but it's getting more complex. The structure there is getting more complex. The King Ross, King Ross open pit mine of Paraca II, which produces a lot of gold, is, is also having problems because of its proximity to a town and a highway. So it's gonna last a few years, but it needs to be replenished with more gold. To replenish such amazing production levels of these mines, several medium-sized discoveries would be needed. Few companies produce over 100,000 ounces. Some have mines with life of mine that will last until 31 to 32, but they will probably look, are looking at relatively smaller production for the last years of production. One point to be we have to remember is that a lot of our exploration is looking at ground that we need exploration on the cover because we have found a lot of the shallower deposits. So th this mean, means more money, more drilling, because you know the easiest things have been found. So this is something, of course, to worry about. Now, there are some 10 ingredients, okay, more or less, that can enhance the chance of discovery, not just for gold, but for any uh, 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 mineral deposit or for any mineral uh, commodity. And that's a list of very general ideas that should be kept in mind. And then comes a, a list of you know, things that should be uh, 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 always, you know, take us to, 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 to to, as a geologist, as, as, as engineers, you know, remember that we are, deep, we are deeper in terms of mining, we have to change our exploration models, we have to train people, et cetera, et cetera. So these are factors that every day in our everyday exploration uh, strategies is, is very important for us. So Brazil's long-standing gold exploration values and issues. Brazil has always uh, uh, done a lot of exploration in Precambrian metasedimentary belts. And most of our deposits are of orogenic type, as I said, which are in metasedimentary belts. However, for a long, long time, syngenetic over epigenetic origin was preferred. And that in many cases did, uh, um, um, did hamper some of, of, of our, our of our uh, uh, findings. Other mineral systems were less explored or perhaps even overlooked, okay? Um, industry uh, underwent a shift, as we already mentioned, from the grassroots exploration to brownfields opportunities. And some of these brownfields uh, opportunities were unfortunately even lost by some of the majors. There is a lack, there was a lack, and, and it was made very obvious to, to us of interest by multinational mining companies to invest in, in, in the uh, uh, proterozoic uh, terrains of the Amapá, Pará, uh, Greenstone Belt uh, uh, of, uh, that are similar to the West Africa terrains, and they all ch they channel the, the money all to the Guianas. And that is something that is, is, is really, should really be tackled because we still have opportunities out there which haven't really completely uh, uh, been looked at. The other problem in Brazil, the other issue in Brazil is the waiting periods to initiate mining due to morose environmental regulations that license you know, operations. So in terms of future, so we know that IOCGs represent today our main gold resources. So these are very fertile systems throughout Earth's history. So more efforts should go into exploring them, including in areas of the Amazon region by new players, okay? We should revisit the Renka Amazon Reserve and other reserves 
to enable exploration in terrains that may be very fertile. In, in the case of the Renka in Amapá, comparable terrains in Western Africa and Guianas are other gold berry and they are all gold producers, okay? Possible new blind ore bodies in the Archean of the Quadrilateral Ferrifero region in Minas Gerais and other terrains of Proterozoic age in Goiás and Tocantins should also be more carefully investigated. Some of the magmatic hydrothermal systems of the Juliana and Tapajós province, magmatic hydrothermal systems, which in the past were not uh, uh, looked into with a lot of care, may yet reveal large world-class deposits. Finally new, finally, new technological approaches, such as machine learning in all large data projects, must be introduced, you know, finally at last in all uh, 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 projects of, of exploration in, in gold. There are some limiting factors that must be taken into, into consideration right now that our young geologists graduating in 2020, 2021 have of course uh, been exposed to the problems of education under this COVID, COVID uh, uh, crisis. And the COVID crisis itself in working in the field is problematic. So we now move on to the last slide, which is good news. Uh, Brazil is, uh, uh, has this uh, first step of uh, tenements offer uh, in early March, the Brazilian mining agency of uh, ar around 2000 areas. So this is good news because uh, we hope, you know, this is going to help uh, give opportunity for exploration with, uh, you know, companies and private, uh, 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 you know, people even, uh, bidding for these areas in some of, you know, important parts of the country. You can see that a lot of these areas are in very important areas of Brazil, in the Northeast, in Central Brazil, etc. So we are very hopeful that this is going to, you know, be a boost for the exploration uh, 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 area of this country. Okay, so, um, I would like now to thank, oops, Ajimbi for inviting me and thanking my colleagues, Frederico Lana, Ebert, Marco Aurelio, and Helber, Helber for contributing tremendously with some ideas and discussion so that I could uh, put together this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lydia, for having shared the scenario uh, for both uh, and the book. Uh, as well as uh, your ideas, and please stand by for the Q and A uh, session. So let's let's give it uh, a, a step forward to the next presentation. But let let me say a few words before. Uh, the future may be cloudy for a range of commodities, but it's becoming bright for those metals linked to the emerging green energy industry. Examples include nickel, copper, cobalt, in the case of electric vehicles, batteries. Or titanium and vanadium and platinum group elements for high-tech applications. These metals are actually pushing up companies to speed up projects. Well, to talk about the geological settings of these commodities in Brazil, I invite Professor Sapeira to you. Cesar, please, this stage is yours. Okay, thanks, uh, Roberto. It's a great pleasure to be in the PGAC. Uh, what I'm going to do today is actually a, a look at the uh, exploration opportunity in Brazil, especially for those commodities commonly associated with MEF ultra -mafic and magnets. I would like first to acknowledge all the institutions that have supported my uh, research group, Brazil, and also the mining industry for several uh, joint projects that we have developed over uh, the last years. And also all the people involved in these projects, the exploration geologists, academics, and both graduate and undergraduate students. Uh, what we are doing here, essentially, it's uh, the background 
is this uh, demand for method that has been impacted by new technologies. And the question that we have been asking is where the additional method to meet this new demand will come from. So I'm looking at how Brazil actually be part of this uh, background demand for new uh, methods that we have now. So what I'm going to do is first an overview of the uh, resources of those commodities commonly associated with mayfield from mayfield magmas. And I will look at this connection between mineral deposits and the magmatism of ultramafic uh, with the large igneous province. So this gives us a background in terms of how these methods come to be now resting in the crust. And then look at briefly look at two uh, examples of prospective belts in the country, and then some final uh, closing remarks. I'm looking at nickel as uh, a proxy for commodities like copper, cobalt, PGs in Brazil. And this is a map with the distribution of the resources, non-resources of nickel in the country. So they are distributed all over the countries on different geological settings. And one important feature here is all these red dots here are resources of nickel associated with uh, laterite deposits, while the ones in blue color are those associated with uh, sulfides. So there is a huge difference. So most of the resources in Brazil are associated with uh, lateritic deposits. And we feel uh, but well distributed uh, deposits associated with sulfites. So deposits or mega then are just uh, resources. And the only exception is the Santa Rita mine that has, uh, let's say, a world-class resources in terms of nickel. I also point out there is two uh, unconventional uh, nickel deposits or nickel resources, and the Jaguar and the GT34 in Carajás. And those are different though they are not the conventional deposits of nickel, they are associated, they are uh, related with hydrothermal process. The question that has haunted us through the years is if there is any reason for the lack of significant nickel copper PG sulfide deposits in Brazil. Uh, the conventional answer to these questions, this country is essentially under explored. So this was an easy answer 20 years ago, it's not so easy right now, because exploration programs have been carried out throughout the country in the last 20 years. So there is, this led to several new discoveries of resources associated with nickel or sulfides. So, uh, what happened now is that if we're looking for new opportunities, so we need actually to take in account the exploration that has been done in the past. Nevertheless, there are several underexplored prospective belts in the country. So just to show you uh, where the production of Brazil in terms of nickel is coming, is coming from. So this is a, a data for 2015. And 2015, that's over the years. 2015, it was the record um, production of nickel in the country, close to 100 uh, kilotons of nickel. And this also shows there is most of the production of nickel is associated with uh, nickel laterite deposits and just a few associated with uh, nickel sulfide. So currently, if we go to 2020, and also most of the production is being sustained by uh, Anglo American and Valley, Anglo American with the deposits in Goiás State and Valley with deposits in Carajás. And now Mirabella, that has been shut down a few years ago, now is being resumed. Uh, now with Atlantic nickel. If you look at titanium and vanadium, especially vanadium, there is one uh, large world-class deposit in the Maracas you know, that is a very exceptionally good deposit in terms of reserves, in terms of the content of vanadium, and has a sustained production now about 12 kilotons of uh, B205. Uh, additional resources also occur in the Campo Alegre de Lourdes, that's a quite large with smaller uh, contents, and also several additional resources of ferro, uh, iron, titanium, vanadium in the country. 
briefly, if we think about how these methods, they come to, to be in the curse now. So they are related to most of those methods. They have been transferred from the mantle to the crust. And this is considered now as happening through mantle problems that have created large igneous problems. So regions where with a lot of mafic or mafic magma has come to the crust in a relatively short time. So I'm using here a diagram by Richard Ernest in 2019. And this creates a framework, framework to uh, locate and try to understand how these uh, deposits have been formed. So large igneous province, so these uh, regions with a large amount of mafic or mafic magmas in the crust, so they are the source of the commodities like nickel, copper, cobalt, PG, titanium, vanadium, and chromium. And as indicated by examples like Norilsky, Bushville, and several other ones. So this is primary uh, deposits. They are also uh, the source in terms of uh, the host rock for uh, the uh, lateritic deposits. So what uh, through the weathering of these ultramafic rocks. And one additional thing that's not usually considered that the, uh, the large igneous province, they also provide uh, energy and source for hydrothermal process. So we also may link some of the hydrothermal deposits. And I'm really thinking here about the hydrothermal nickel deposits in Carajás as part of this large igneous province. When you look to the uh, distribution of nickel PG deposits through time. Now we, we know that they have happening from your kin to recent times, and they are tend to be concentrated on a specific specific periods of time. So these specific periods of time they correlated with well known uh, large igneous province. So the only exception is Sudbury that uh, impact melt, but all of the conventional deposits they tend to be correlated with large igneous province. If we look at the same uh, diagram here, now uh, pinpoint some of these mafic or mafic complex or mafic or mafic uh, provinces and mineral deposits associated. We can see that Brazil has highly variable prospective petrotectonic settings. So we have uh, Newark and uh, Greenstone belts. We have these intrusions with ages similar to Bolshevik. So we have like uh, Mirabella, Palestina. There are some intrusions in the Mesoproterozoic and Rondonia, Mato Grosso that correlated with Vosges Bay. So one time there are some of this magmatism associated with the Parana Basin or Par Naiba Basin that is also Phanerozoic that may, may be correlated with the Norilsk deposit. So the important thing here that the ages of mafic to mafic magmatism and the settings are very similar with the ones associated with the uh, large igneous province that are responsible for most of the deposits in the world. I'm now looking at some uh, examples. So uh, if you look at the longer nickel sulfide deposits, so this is located in the uh, Carajás. So one important thing that is this Carajás, uh, we can actually think about a large igneous province now, has lots of nickel laterite deposits, has one uh, nickel PG deposit, and also is the place where a uh, hydrothermal nickel like the Jaguar deposit is located. I will call attention to this uh, specific region here, the Serra Leste. So uh, we concentrate a lot of work, and there is some recent published papers. So we have quite good data now about the longer nickel sulfide deposit, data on the magmatic structure and geochemistry of these rocks, the chromatites and also about the nickel PG uh, mineralization. What I'm trying to point out here, that is, this is a huge 250 kilometers long belt of mafic to mafic uh, intrusions with newer king and age. And there is one specific uh, region located in the Eastern portion that is called the Serra Leste region, where most of the uh, anomalous nickel PG occurrences and non resources are located. So if you look at uh, this is the Serra Leste region. So we are here at the longer complex, this complex here that hosts the uh, nickel PG deposit, the PG nickel deposit. 
And we can see here another intrusion that the formiga complex also with PG nickel complex. So we are here looking at this intrusion here. And also they are not far away from the Luanga Serra Pelada, from the Serra Pelada uh, copper PG deposit that will be located just to the west of the formiga, formiga complex. This is a, a specific region within the Carajás province where a lot of occurrence of PG nickel and a lot of occurrence of PG happens. So the PG, uh, the longer deposit is a typical magmatic deposit, typical strata bound PG nickel deposit associated with sulfides, so interstitial base methyl sulfides. One in, uh, important feature that this has a very high nickel tenor. So the nickel tenor in terms of uh, sulfide, the sulfide content, is about 15 wave percent. That is a very high nickel nickel ten, and this is reflected in terms of the mineralogy of the sulfides with the larger amount of pentrodite as part of the base metal sulfides. So there's some critical features here that we can point out. One important thing about Luanga, if you compare the olivine composition in the Luanga complex, it has an extremely high nickel content. So it is higher than most of the world uh, mafical to mafical rocks. It is high of most of the intrusions that we investigated in Brazil. So this is the domain of the uh, olivine composition of the longer complex. And they are also much higher than most of the intrusions in Carajás, except for some uh, samples that close to the Jacaré complex in Brazil. So this uh, abundance of uh, PG anomalies, we can actually put everything together. So this may be related with a magma that has high nickel content, and this can explain so the uh, high nickel content of this uh, nickel sulfide. So that's, I would say, within the Carajás, we can actually point out the Serra Leste region as a favorable setting for exploration for nickel copper PG. Uh, looking at the northern, another belt, so this will be the uh, Guaporé, known as Guaporé Sutur Zone, that's close to the border between Brazil and Bolivia. So this Sutur Zone, we have uh, recently published a paper with a new geological concept. I think this is an important, important feature. Uh, and this is also located in the northwestern margin of the Amazon, Amazon country. So this is the, is the paper. So we actually bring a new geological concept. What is important here is that Morro Saint-Boné, Morro do Leme, and most several of these ultramafic intrusions here, those are reasonably high, uh, large intrusions, they have been considered to be uh, tectonic slices of a fuel light. So we are reinterpreting this actually as ultramafic intrusions actually as part of a cluster of ultramafic intrusions in a belt there is eventually more than 300 kilometers long. And this provide a very prospective setting. So this is one region. Uh, we, if we look at some of the, of the features here, uh, one region in one region. So if a lot of this uh, olivine and chromite rich mafic ultramafic intrusion. So it's a very large belt. So we consider it as a large igneous province too. It has very primitive parental magmas indicated by the composition of the ore within of these rocks. And these structures, if we start looking at different structures, we can see a highly variable uh, magmatic structures, including uh, dynamic uh, magmatic systems that, are, that serve as conduits for this uh, magmatic uh, for this uh, input of magma into the crust. There is a regional association with a major crust, uh, crustal scales, scale zone. And a very important feature, it has counter rocks. The counter rocks where these uh, ultramafic intrusions and places are very rich in sulfides. So we have evidence for uh, uh, simulation of counter rocks, both uh, uh, textures and structures and also with geochemical features. So, and also the nickel copper sulfide, they have been recognized in different uh, intrusions and with different styles of uh, nickel, different styles of nickel sulfide mineral realization. An additional important feature that the, the, some of the olivines are depleted in nickel. So we 
we have one of the satellite intrusions that we have looked at, they have very depleted olivine, while uh, the larger intrusions, they have primitive magnesium-rich uh, nickel and magnesium-rich olivine, indicating that they originated from an originally uh, primitive parental magnet. So as a closing uh, remarks, I would say that Brazil has highly variable perspective uh, petrotectonic settings. And the search for opportunities should consider the previous exploration program. So this, uh, there are several underexplored belt, but we can look Brazil now as an un underexplored country. And I would say the good uh, way to look at is try new geological concepts in underexplored large igneous province in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Zero, for your presentation on this set of metals associated with native to the native metal. Well, uh, now it's time to move to the question and answer session. It, it, it's the time that we're going to have. Uh, we're going to have a lively uh, panelist. So I would ask for the audience uh, if interested to post your, your questions using this Q and A box. Uh, but uh, as a as the moderator, uh, I have to play my role, and uh, I would like to give a kickoff in in this chat with 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 my colleagues here, and uh, and I'd like to start with with Anderson. I have a question here uh, for you. Uh, Anderson, uh, you in your presentation you have taken us to a sort of a ride uh, to several you know, provinces and districts in, in Brazil, including the world Carajás, the uh, Iron uh, Quadrangle, uh, but also you presented some emerging provinces and underexplored uh, areas. Well. One of the, the main roles uh, uh, of the Geological Survey of Brazil, CPRM, uh, is to enhance the geological knowledge of provinces and districts, uh, particularly uh, at the regional scale, which as a, as a consequence, as a result, may contribute to a more efficient assessment of new grounds for mineral exploration. So, from this standpoint, Anderson, what is the survey's strategic plan for the Brazilian province and district for the next two years? Sorry for the long question. No, no problem. Uh, can you hear me, Roberto? Yes, I can. Ah, okay. Oh, first of all, thank, thanks for your question. Um, for the next two years, uh, our strategy is to continue to developing important projects in our main mineral provinces in Brazil. Uh, our goal is in this period is to finish geological and geochemical surveys in areas like Carajás, but also in Quadrilatero Ferrífero, or Iron Quadrangle, sorry, and some areas in the Northwest and all over the country. Uh, we are also developing mineral resource assessment projects that I talked during the presentation. And we can add to that the publication of new favorability maps in regional and also in local scales in these specific projects in the main mineral provinces in Brazil. But. Okay, Anderson, thank you uh, very much. Uh, I'm going to cast uh, a, a question to Lydia, but Anderson, just uh, hang on because I have another question here for you coming from outside. Just hang ah, okay. on. Okay, uh, I'm, so, uh, I'm with <laughs> All right, Lydia, uh, as, I, as I said previously, uh, Latin America uh, has stood out as a prolific region for gold production when compared to other regions in the world and has a, attracted a great deal of investment. Nevertheless, nevertheless, among the, the 10 top gold mines, only one is actually located in Latin, in Latin America, which is Pueblo Viejo in the Dominican Republic. Uh, Brazil is not uh, in, in the list. 
Although, that is a very several uh, economically important mines, uh, 62 departments, according to your presentation, were mostly containing oleogenic carbon. Uh, so the, 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 the point here is that we don't actually have, or we don't expect to have the big elephant. We're not going to find the big elephant. Or uh, you mentioned yourself uh, in your presentation that no big projects to be launched in the near future. Uh, so uh, are they there? I mean, the big elephants are there. Are there? So we should be bullish about it. About it. Uh, but we don't know because uh, we need more exploration, uh, particularly in, in these areas that are considered unexplored in terms of potential. Please, Lydia. Well, thank you, Robert. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Ah, OK. Well, thank you, Roberto for the intriguing long question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look, if we look at this, I would call marvelous geological framework that we have in this country, of course, we have to expect more. There's, there has to be a lot more out there. We, we may have found a lot of elephants, but there, there may be a lot of elephants. Well, the tails have to be still out there somewhere. I think of one of the issues that persisted over the decades is that, and this is not, like I said, you know, during the presentation, this is not something that Brazil has been going through, but the whole world has been going through for a long time, is that the mining sector has not been spending money on greenfields. Okay, so we, we don't look outside the box. Okay, we all concentrate our views on, you know, this district, that district, and we do not go beyond. So looking at that district, at, at the older discoveries, at, you know, the older things that we've known about for a long time, you know, we, and in the case of Brazil, because of the colonial times, we have a lot of diggings and big holes <laughs> in traditional areas of Minas Gerais and Sao Paulo, et cetera. So a lot of the mining companies go to those big holes and they have been extremely helpful in the past. But you see, these are the, the very shallow parts. And we know that the shallow things have been found. We have to move a little deeper. deeper. So, so for one, I think we have to start looking outside the box in that sense of beyond and beyond that that means investment going back to greenfield thinking okay the other thing is that we have to spend more on drilling because that means that we're going deeper okay um the, the other thing is that one of the critical points that i pointed out is, is time because in Brazil, it takes us a long time to turn something that is feasible, that we consider feasible, into production. We'll say, so how can, look, I, I think in terms of governmental uh, uh, um, uh, changes, we have done a lot. We have moved, okay? Things have moved. And I, I know that this is a big country. Things take a long time to, to change, etc. You are now in a key position <laughs> in Adimbi, and you go through a, you know, a lot of discussions, etc. But we need to move, you know, faster. And uh, and I, I I did talk a lot about the price of gold because this is giving us an enormous opportunity. Had had we you know, a lot of gold assets in our hands at the moment, we could make use of this opportunity, put them in you know, into production. So my answer to you, yes, I think we have a lot of elephants, little elephants out there to be found. Did I answer you a little bit? Oh, Lydia, uh, you, you, you certainly did. I thank you for being bullish about it. About it, you know, it's like the it's like that movie X X File. The truth is out there. We have to find it. Thank yes. you very much. 
No problem. Uh, uh, Cesar, it, 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 it's your should, turn. Should I disappear I'm now? I have a, a question. Roberto, Roberto, should but, I disappear uh, no, now? No, no, just no. please hang on. Oh, okay. No, 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 just please hang on. Okay. Uh, Cesar, it's your turn now. Uh, well, just just a, a, an introduction here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, but nickels are, are better sources for class one uh, nickel because of, of the high uh, purity. And, 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 and it's, there is an easier method as well to uh, make the nickel so made for the electric vehicle batteries. When compared to class two uh, 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 nickel, which would be, would be related to the laterite. Uh, well, as you quite well uh, presented, uh, in Brazil, lateritic nickel deposits are dominant. And, and we have a few small, medium, medium size nickel copper uh, sulfide or uh, wood PGE uh, sulfides uh, uh, deposits. One hard hitting message in your, in your presentation regarding new opportunities is, uh, uh, in the nickel resources is the reassessment of previous exploration. I think that you were referring particularly to nickel sulfide deposits, correct me if I'm wrong. So could you please elaborate a bit more on this statement? Okay, thank you, Roberto. Uh, well, this is a good, a good question. Uh, uh, I would say this, I was, this applies well when I, when I say, I actually, I didn't use uh, a heavy word like a reassessment. I was, taking to consider that there was some exploration. So reassessment, as we understand, so this usually would not be possible to be done. But it is important to consider that uh, something previous has been done. And the message here uh, is mainly uh, to address one common misunderstanding that happens, especially for people that are new in the country that eventually consider this as uh, uh, essentially a black canvas. So nothing has been done. So this is not real. So this is something that may, uh, we can apply this black canvas concept 20 years ago, but not now. So a lot of exploration or, uh, has been done in terms of uh, nickel and other commodities in the mafic, ultra mafic environment. So it is, uh, and when we when we think about this uh, search space for exploration, so one thing is moving to a new geography, nothing has been done. Another thing is getting into one space that has previous exploration projects that have been done there. So this is essentially the message that I have. So it's don't think that you are getting into. Uh, 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 let's say a new geography where nothing has been done before. So we are actually moving into uh, environments that may have very uh, diverse uh, amount of exploration in them. So I think I would say the, the best thing is to actually move to those where this exploration has not been very uh, considerable in terms of nickel sulfides or uh, titanium vanadium and try there the new concepts, new ideas, or new exploration methods. Okay, I don't know if I answered this. Thank you very much. Uh, I, oh, you certainly did. Uh, and uh, I, I'd like to move back to, to Anderson. But before doing that, uh, let me just uh, pinpoint here that uh, thank you very much for the questions that I'm receiving. But uh, uh, I'm going to give priority to questions that have uh, more uh, uh, tuning to to our uh, to our panel, uh, which is which is geology of all deposits, mineral exploration, so all from the geological point of view. Uh, so if 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 I if I'm going to omit some some questions, is because they are not. Uh, uh, actually, to to the purpose of this of this panel. So, uh, Anderson, uh, again, to you, I have a question here from Char Charles Charles uh, and and, uh, and I'm going to read it. 
uh, there is currently an ongoing auction of expired areas. Lei Long, did you just want to do that? When does it end? And when do you expect the next phase of auction areas to occur? Again, when does it end? And when do you expect the next phase of auction areas to occur? Okay, um, let me see if I understand. First of all, thank you, Charles. Um, I believe he's talking about the offering rounds by the National Mining Agents. And we have this week, if I am right, um, an offering round, the second one. And the next one I showed in my presentation, I think will be in May, May of 2021. Now we have almost 7,000 areas that will be offering by CPRM. But along the year, we have more than 30,000, 35,000 areas. That's it. So this is going to be between 2021 and the beginning of 2022. I, I think I, I covered the question. Okay, thank you. Anderson, thank you, Charles, for, for the question. Uh, so back to me uh, again. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, uh, sorry, my colleagues, Lydia and myself, I'm going to take you by surprise with a question here, which is, which is very general, but I'd like to hear uh, your point of view from the academic uh, 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 side, which is this. Uh, what would be the critical knowledge gaps that must be filled in the geological framework of our, of the Brazilian mineral province and districts that could make a difference in the search for new space for exploration, regardless gold, regardless the uh, uh, related metals. Well, uh, ladies first, Lydia. Um. Well, I mean, <clears throat> other than the need, I think, to widen out further, of course, our knowledge, you know, of the geological framework of some of these key areas and key districts, et cetera, for gold of exploration, gold exploration. And um, again, I would say, I believe we, we need to think outside the box, not only outside the box in the sense that we have to broaden, you know, the knowledge base of those areas, uh, extending, okay, the knowledge outside the heart of these areas, but also in terms of, um, uh, 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 of uh, mineral systems, okay? As I said in the presentation, we traditionally in Brazil focused our exploration efforts on gold, on meta sedimentary belts of all ages. And, and mind you, we've been ex incredibly successful, okay? But I think we, we, we failed in many ways to address some of the other <clears throat> gold bearing mineral systems, which do produce, go produce gold in so many other parts of the world. Because we have a lot of Archean and Paleoproteus, like we think greenstone belts, greenstone belts, et cetera, which is natural and you know, which has been giving us a lot of orogenic gold and producing a lot of gold. But I think, uh, and you see, every time we, we, we think a little bit of, out of this box and we go to places like Tapajós and you know, the south of Brazil, for example, you know, in, in, in uh, uh, um, Rio Grande do Sul, et, et, et cetera, we see that we can be successful. So I think in terms, if you think academic, you know, speaking, and I think in that way, the academia can help, of course, we can be successful in these other sort of different, I would say, mineral systems in Brazil. For example, for the VMS type systems that Brazil, you know, has never really explored much for, mainly for gold. I mean, we have, you know, one mine opening, etc., but it's not for gold. I mean, this is a complex system uh, which Brazil has never really faced. And, you know, mainly for 
when they have gold, they are not, they're very tricky to find. <laughs> and we would have to invest a lot in our geologists to learn how to find uh, gold buried VMS deposits because they're not easy to find. So we don't have the culture for these, for these guys. And then we have these wonderful IOCG deposits that I think uh, a lot of mining companies in Brazil don't think about them, but they can give you, you know, a lot of money because <laughs> as <laughs> not all our IOCGs have gold, you know, just a small family have, but that small family can have a lot of gold. So I think it's time, yes, we broaden our sort of ideas in terms of other mineral systems. Again, did I answer you a little bit? Yes, you, you always do. Uh, <laughs> Cesar, please. I'm going to spare Anderson on that. OK, just for the academics. Okay. <laughs> well, I would say, uh, I think and the critical the thing academic. is uh, to do the first things first. I think this is one basic thing. And I'm thinking about the mythical from mythical, uh, system so it is sometimes we have a lot of data in terms of uh, isotopes and several other things but we don't understand the magmatic structure we don't understand how they are connected in terms of the uh, regional geology so sometimes we, we have a lot of data but simple things so i, I would i would recall the paper i was talking about in the guapore region and there's a simple thing there. So they are intrusions. Why they are intrusions? Because we have a structure, we have textures that indicate they are intrusions. So, so there is all these things that have been done you know, without considering the basic. It doesn't make sense. So I think the, uh, as academics, we should be responsible that we organize the things that we have, they follow sequence that will be uh, important in terms of the understanding, and this will be useful for the exploration. I think doing first things first, I think is the main message I have now when I'm uh, trying to actually do science with my, with my students. Yeah, thank you, Cesar. If, if, if you allow me to give my own opinion about it, uh, uh, Yes, in terms of mineral systems, you have to think of a different scale uh, 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 from the regional scale down to the scale of, of the deposit in order to understand the process. So in this context, uh, and, and following my, my question here, one of, the, one of the stumbling blocks that we face in, in, in Brazil is, is studies uh, uh, that extend to the regional scale is to understand and correlate the mineralization, regardless of gold or, or the magnetic related metals, to big events. Uh, uh, this, is, this is quite a stumbling block uh, nowadays in, 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 in the country. Most of the studies are very much concentrated at the district or deposit scale, but we do need you know, these regional scale studies. And in this sense, I think that the geological survey of the ZOCPRM has a, a tremendous important uh, role uh, to actually fill uh, 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 this gap. Uh, but it's not a question for you yet, uh, Anderson. Uh, the question that I have for you is this now. Uh, you, you've shown that the geological survey of Brazil has 30 mining projects that will be available to public offerings and biddings within this program called uh, Investment Partnership Program, the PPI. Uh, these permits include uh, areas with, uh, with uh, uh, potential to contain well, well important deposits of gold, nickel, copper cobalt, zinc, copper nickel, in different geological uh, settings. Thus, CPRM or the, the Geological Survey of Brazil take these areas as examples of new search spaces for mineral exploration in Brazil with potential for investment. Oh, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we really expect that the auctions will promote more investments in these selected areas. 
uh, I can give you an example of the Projeto de uh, Cobre, sorry, uh, the Bon Jardim projects, I was trying to remember. And this is a, an area that we have do, did recent works in the last 10, five years. And there is also potential for another kind of mineralization such there is an example of a intrusion related gold system in the deposit of Fazenda Nova, also near to the bon, the bon Jardim project. There is an example of nickel and copper deposit associated with mafic and ultramafic rocks of the Americano do Brasil deposit. And also because the, the, this project is in the context of the magmatic arc of, the, of Goiás in the southern part, there is also potential for uh, porphyrite deposits as well as epithermal deposits. So when we have uh, the release of new auctions, uh, the starting of new mineralization projects and all these potentials coming together with the survey that ge the geological survey has taken in this place, I think this is a very good area for investments for exploration. We have all of, all of these new projects, potential for other types of deposits and recent work by the geological survey. And not only in this area, but also in another areas that will be action this year. I, I think okay. I, did you answer yes, me? Yes, you did. Because yes, some, yes, you did. sometimes the, the sound was not that good for me and I lost some right. parts it, of your it, question. It, 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 yeah, it must be my accent, my Brazilian accent. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry uh, about uh, mine. <laughs> uh, uh, Anderson, these, these, these offerings normally are, uh, I, I think that from, uh, from an investor or a stakeholder standpoint, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, actually you see, you're not actually investing on, on any specific deposit, but you actually see the big picture, the big picture is actually the geological setting exactly. within which this is are the not setting can tell you much more in terms of, of exploration potential, potential rather than just that point, which is called deposit. So this, this might be from the investor stakeholder standpoint, the attraction for, or should be, the attraction for these uh, uh, for these areas. Yes. Uh, uh, can I just add? Have, uh, sorry. So, can yes, just please, add yes, please. Yes, uh, I totally agree with your point. And this is the re one more reason to invest in these areas, like in the Bon Jardim Copper Project, is we have a good infrastructure there. Uh, there is in the center of the country with roads and all the infrastructure necessary for the development development of mining. So this is one, this is are selected because it's a great opportunity. And the geological setting is, in my opinion, I used to work in the north part of the geological, the, the magmatic arc of Goiás. And I think the southern part has tremendous opportunities for investors. Well, thank you very much, Anderson. Uh, let me now kick on Cesar, back to you, Cesar. And, and, and my question would be about the hydrocarbon nickel process. So this, is, this is brilliant, this is, this is neat. You know, this is a new uh, a conceptual model uh, to be better explored in, in, in Brazil. And, and as you pointed out, uh, linked to large igneous uh, problems, at least in the case of, of Carajás, perhaps uh, other examples would actually uh, uh, appear uh, or should be considered uh, as a new search, search space for, for, for nickel, uh, such as uh, Serra Geral and, and, and the Paraná Basin, and so on and so forth. But anyway, uh, uh, what, is, what is your, could you elaborate more on, on this new conceptual model uh, on hydrothermal nickel in, in Brazil? Okay, thanks, Roberto. So again, you are always getting good, good questions. <laughs> uh, I would say this is this is, some, is something really different from what we usually uh, know about nickel. So uh, because if if you look what uh, if we uh, reframe 
what used to be hydrothermal nickel in the past. So hydrothermal nickel was uh, nickel that is hosted in ultramafic intrusions and by some process they have moved away from it, but they are usually close. They are still you know, in the environment of the ultramafic and mafic rock. There are some nickel associated with uh, black shapes. So these are something that has been known for long. And what we are looking at in Icarajas, it is different. So it is not hosted or close or directly related with ultramafic and mafic rocks. And they are not related also with black shapes. So this is a new, is a new concept. So uh, it's a new concept for us because Vali has been known this for quite a while. But, uh, and this is something I would say that uh, this is in terms of when you think about the search space, this open search space and not search space in the country, that open search space in the world. So this is a, this is a new concept, it's a new type of mineral uh, deposit. Uh, we have a lot to learn about this, uh, this new type of uh, deposit. And the, the only thing I would like to say here now that we are, so this is, uh, uh, we have together in the same area. So a large igneous province with quite a lot of uh, nickel rich systems and a huge hydrothermal system. That this huge hydrothermal system has been known for producing a lot of uh, gold deposits and IOCG type of deposits. And in the combination of both, so we are actually getting also a nickel, nickel uh, deposits in it. So I think this is what, if, if we want to think another examples, so we needed to combine the two things that we have in Carajás. So the large igneous province, a province that is very rich in terms of nickel, and with specific characteristics of the system that indicating that it is indeed very rich in nickel, it's producing uh, nickel sulfide with very high nickel content. We are finding uh, nickel content in all ravines that are essentially anomalous in terms of what we know in the world. So this and this nickel rich region system combined with a very robust hydrothermal hydrothermal system. If you remember one of my slides, uh, the Jaguar deposit, it is mm -hmm. surrounded by nickel laterite deposit. There is almost no space to put the Jaguar deposit there. And also not far away from nickel sulfide, from PG nickel sulfide deposits of the uh, Wanga, Wanga complex. But I think what uh, any environment that we think uh, that is not Karajas, I would say uh, it should combine so a very nickel rich system with a very robust hydrothermal system. And in any case, it opens uh, a very interesting a very for, ex for exploration for nickel in, 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 in Brazil and, el and elsewhere. I mean, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Well, we're approaching the end of, of our lively chat here, but I still have my last question, if I may. Uh, and and I'm, I have one for Anderson to, to, to finish our, our chat, and then one uh, for Lydia and Cesar, the same question. I'll start with, Ander, or with Anderson. Uh, uh, Anderson, what are the main products to be delivered by the survey, the Brazilian Geological Survey, in the next two years that could be considered, and pay attention to this, uh, could be considered the sherry on the table for the companies looking for new search space for exploration. The sherry on the cake, I <laughs> I like the, this question. Um, if I have to choose some products that we are developing, uh, I can go with the new geological maps of the Carajás Mineral Province. Uh, we are going to, to deliver in the next two or three years. Uh, geological maps in the 1 to 1,100 1, scale, and also new geochemical data. But I also want to point the new favorability maps that we are developing in most of the main provinces. I, I'm working currently in a project in the Alta Pajosa and Alta Floresta provinces, and we are going to do some maps for favorability for copper associated with porphyry deposits as the example of the recently found Jaca. And I believe this is another game, this is a game changer in areas with a uh, lack of geoscientific knowledge because they are going to 
help the companies to improve the investments and looking for the right areas with high potential. But there is also many other, many other products that we can discuss here, but I think I go with these two, two products, okay? Well, th thank you very much for pinpointing the sherry on cake. I'll, I'll leave you alone. Uh, let me just finish with the media and, and, and Cesar here with the following question. Uh, uh, the number of world-class discoveries uh, has declined worldwide. And the current challenge now, at least in, in, in several countries such as uh, Australia and Canada, is to find concealed deep ore bodies. Your opinions, my colleagues. Do you see the same trend here in Brazil? Or, or there is still room to spot with a relatively shallow deposit? Do you see the, the, the trend of the same trend that you see in Australia and Canada to find deep deposits? Or here in Brazil, do perhaps to the, the geological knowledge? Of, 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 the, of, of our province, uh, there is still room to find shallow deposits. Lydia, uh, always you, ladies first. Um, okay, in some of the more mature di districts, you know, let's think Carajás, uh, sorry, Quadrilater Ferrifre, for example, where we have found, I mean, the Archean, I'll, I'll talk about the Archean where most of the gold is. Uh, where we have found a lot of, of gold there. You see, one of the problems, again, you know, is, is, is model and, you know, culture, et cetera. Um, the, um, the metasedimentary belt there is more metasedimentary than metavolcanic sedimentary, okay? So for many years, I think we, we, we worked on that belt thinking, that we had an abitibi in our hands and we don't, okay? We have more of a superior type, yellow knife type, you know, greenstone belt than anything else. So because we didn't have that idea, we ended up putting a lot of effort, you know, in, into any strategy into something that wasn't actually there, okay? Of course, there's a lot of banded information and then everyone went to, oh, let's put the effort in the Benadar formation. But in fact, what we do have there is a lot of turbidites. And turbidites produce a lot of gold in some parts of the world, but people did not, did not put effort in turbidites. So we, we sort of diverted our exploration efforts thinking that we had something that we actually didn't have. <laughs> On the other hand, for so long, our sin geneticists convinced the mining companies that the the ore there was syngenetic. So if you ask me, I still believe that there's some ore out there. I wouldn't say shallow, shallow, but uh, that oh, has yeah, been yeah. overlooked. Yeah, because of, of wrong model, because of insisting on working on the ABTB type that was not ABTB type, you know what I mean? Well, that's one point. The other thing is that when you go to the outskirts, of the quadrilateral, it's not quadrilateral anymore. It's people call it, you know, the great quadrilateral, whatever, to the north western portion that people are now calling the Pitangi Greenstone Belt that turns out to be a little older. And that is a lot more juvenile than the, the Hilda's values itself. And it has VMS type deposits there because it has a lot more mafic, ultra mafic rocks. And it does ha have zinc. They start finding new deposits. Okay, new target. So people didn't go far enough. So I don't know, Roberto, I, I think we do have a ground that is not mature enough in Brazil to be able to say, yeah, perhaps we do. <laughs> okay, this, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Cesar, your comments, please. Yeah, yeah, I actually I agree with Lydia. So it all depends on how mature you know, the belt, the uh, terrain that is being looked at. Uh, uh, specifically, uh, I would say uh, if we think about uh, nickel sulfide deposits, they are not very big. So the footprint is not very large too. 
And I think there is, uh, I would say, potential to discover uh, shell of nickel sulfide deposits in Brazil in those uh, underexplored belts. I would not say that we are not going to find it uh, nearby Fortaleza de Minas. Okay, so there has been quite a lot of exploration of that. But, and several of these poorly explored or they have not been explored specifically for nickel sulfides. I think we actually still have potential to find uh, extremely good large deposits uh, close to the surface. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, now uh, it's the end of our, of our panel because Carolina has already uh, uh, raised the flag, the red flag. So uh, I'd like to thank you guys, thank Lydia, Thanks, uh, Cesar and, and Anderson. I, I had a very good time talking here uh, to you. And uh, thank you, the audience that we had as well, the questions. And uh, well, uh, I officially close this panel by saying, please be safe, whatever you are. Carolina, it's back to you now. Thank, Thank you, you Roberto. Thank you, Cesar, Lydia, Anderson, obrigada. Thank you so much for being here today and for sharing all your knowledge uh, with our audience. Uh, I have to say, I, I, I learned a lot. Uh, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, not really, I, I usually keep myself into the business part of mining, but the technical part is very, very interesting. So thank you so much for a great session. Uh, thank you, Roberto, for leading this today. So uh, thank you all for joining us here today. Hope you found this contact informative. Hope we see some investors looking at those areas that Anderson mentioned as well uh, in order to, to be explored. And uh, as Roberto mentioned, stay healthy and stay safe wherever you are. Thank you for being here today, and I'll see you shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Lija. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.